Okay, I'm going to do a, a quick video blog on insolvency and just to look at the idea that uh, the creditors pay rather than debtors. It's uh, something that takes a little bit of getting used to, but we're going to start off and we'll just do the usual thing of a T account. We'll call this the debtor's bank. Uh, and this is where the person gets their income, their wage. Say it's a thousand a month. We're going to say that they've got loans. I'll just do that for a house, which is 500, uh, a car which is 200, um, credit union of 200, and then we'll say that they have living expenses of, say, 300. Now, to make those accounts balance, what you're going to have to do is, say, 1,200 there, and then you're going to have 1,200 here, and really what you're doing is you're going to have an accrual or brought forward showing a liability into the next month accounting period. Now, in practice, if someone had savings, perhaps they could carry that for a while, but if they didn't, then they are technically insolvent. Uh, so what might actually be happening is that over here we'll say this is the house account uh, this is the bank the bank's bank they might be getting 500 and um, the car and the credit union might be getting um, we'll just say in this instance they're getting 200 and the credit union is getting nothing that's how it's working out at present so the person wants to go for insolvency now what will happen then and we're going to assume that this deal went ahead is that the individual will now have their thousand wage coming in and uh, we'll say that in this one that the bank who had the mortgage got voting rights they stayed at 100 percent of payment that the uh, car went to 75 that the uh, credit union went to 75 and that the uh, the pip is getting 50 and there's about 300 in living expenses allowable, and that would be 859. Yeah, that's a thousand. So now we're back in balance. All right. So this person is now back able to live their life. So what is effectively happening is that over here on the on the car, the uh, they would be getting 900 a year instead of the expected 2400 credit union would be getting 900 a year instead of the expected 2400 now what that equates to effectively is a 1500 euro shortfall on each one of these accounts and although it may not be that it's easily seen as the creditors paying for this deal to occur that foregone income is effectively from them and that shows up in two areas here for each one and then also in the pip so the loss expected loss of 125 per month there and the uh, 50 going to the pip are really in fact something that is, is, is occurring from the creditor perspective that's ultimately where that money is coming from and that's why creditors pay for insolvency debtors don't uh, they do actually make the payment, but the cost rests with the creditor. It would be like somebody going to a pub with me, and if they give me money and I buy the pints, I've paid for them, but the actual cost is on the person who gave me the money. So that's important to realize. It's also important to realize that if you had a situation where this debtor has utter insolvency, uh, let's just say, for instance, we'll take a new example, All right, that now they are here and the debtor makes a thousand a month and because of their circumstances their acceptable living expenses are 950 and their debts are a thousand that in this case uh, it's, it's, it's an insolvency it's too far the creditors could at a maximum hope to get maybe the 50 euro uplift there or what if you have a situation where the debtor bank the wages are 900 and the reasonable living expenses are 1200 well, in that case, they're already insolvent. They're below what is considered the minimum income standards. Again, in this case, people will say, well, the person is precluded from insolvency. But it's important to remember, insolvency is like examinership. It's there for people who stand a chance after the event. To put this into a company perspective, it would be more like a company being so critically below water that it is a guaranteed liquidation. And on the personal basis, the relevant proxy for that is probably bankruptcy, not insolvency. So it's not that people are locked out of insolvency, 
by not having an income is actually not appropriate if you can't make some form of repayment. And that's what you would see there. That person couldn't opt for insolvency because they can't even opt for the minimum living expenses. The only option there is, is a future of poverty. That person needs help beyond what insolvency can offer. And so uh, there's some important considerations. First one being the creditor pays. Second one is insolvency can't help people if they can't actually go insolvent.